Out front now, Bob Zeidman. As I mentioned, today he was awarded that $5 million after debunking Mike Lindell's false election data. And Bob, I really appreciate your time. So let's just start off here, right? He puts this challenge out there. He says that it would have to be arbitrated and you take it all the way to the finish line. What's your reaction today when you find out you've been awarded $5 million from Mike Lindell? Well, Aaron, thanks for having me. And I think it was uh, relief, not because uh, I, I doubted my own findings. The, in fact, I, I never expected to be able to show that it was bogus data because normally data analysis could take weeks or months and I had three days. But the data was so obviously fake that I spent a few hours before I could show it was fake. I always worried though, Mike Lindell has a lot of resources, a lot of money, and you never know. I, you know, I think the court system generally, justice is served, but not always. And so I was never sure if I was gonna be awarded the money. And more than the money, I really wanted the people, the public to know what was going on. Well, and, and that's what you've accomplished. I mean, amazing, you'd say you'd think it would take you, you know, could take you months, took you hours, essentially. Um, right. that, that's, that's how difficult it was to debunk, to make the point. Um, Mike Lindell, you just heard, he told CNN that this will end up in court. Do you think you'll ever get the $5 million that Lindell has been ordered to pay you? Unfortunately, I don't think so. It would be nice, and I don't think it's because of court. I think if he does go to court, if he does appeal, I think it's gonna be thrown out. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't think he has a case against Dominion, or I should say Dominion has a great case against him. And uh, Dominion, of course, is asking for, I think, $1.2 billion. And I don't think Lindell has that. So I think, uh, I I'm afraid he's going to be out of money before I ever see my $5 million. Right. Well, it's interesting you're making the point. It's not because of a court issue. Uh, it's because he's going to keep losing on this crucial issue. Now, back to this point when you said this could have taken months. You had three days. It took you hours to prove that his data about the election was false. How are you able to do it? Well, it was really the data was an amateurish attempt to disguise the data. Now, it's kind of like if you, you know, if you're doing a cryptogram in the newspaper and you substitute letters, uh, you know, you get these random looking letters, but if you know how to substitute them, then you get a message. And basically somebody did that kind of transformation twice on just a simple Word document. One was uh, a Word document, it was a table of numbers and the other was just pages and pages and pages of nonsense, gibberish, as if somebody were just typing randomly. But I happen, I have 40 years of experience doing this kind of thing, and I just happened to notice certain patterns. And I said, I wonder what happens if you do this transformation and if you do that transformation. And what I ended up was with these very simple Word documents. And I was just so surprised that, uh, th that I was able to do that. It's not what I expected. If somebody were to create well, if it were real data, it would take a long time to analyze. If it were fake data, you would hope somebody would be sophisticated enough to do some significant modifications, but that's not what happened here. And, 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 and in terms of, you know, Mike Lindell's role, you know, he's out left, right, and center, you know, saying all of this stuff. Did, did he have any idea? You know, that was a, a big debate among all the experts. All of us in, at his symposium agreed that this was not real data. We, you know, most of them didn't know what it was or didn't submit a report. Uh, but we were all wondering, did Mike know that this was fake data uh, and was saying it anyway, or did just he just didn't know and he wanted so badly to believe that this was evidence of, of uh, uh, hacking into the elections that he just put it out there. But I think in the long run, after the whole arbitration, let me put it this way. I think he has convinced himself it's real because it needs to be real. In his mind, Trump needs to be president at all costs. And therefore, anyone who challenges him is incompetent. I'm not the only one who's challenged the data. Members of his own team have done that. And he has uh, essentially gone out and destroyed their careers. So, Bob, here's the thing. You know, when you talk about he has to believe, you know, it, it, in his mind that he just, you know, it's a psycho psychological thing. He has to believe that Trump is president. Well, this comes from Trump from the very beginning, right? Saying that there was election fraud, right? And then, and then surrounding himself with people who would deliver him whatever it took, right? In this case, uh, you know, these, this, this fake information. I, I, I want to be clear. You've said you did vote for Trump twice, but he is out there even now, days ahead of Joe Biden about to announce that he's going to run for re-election, continuing to spread lies about the election that have been debunked. This is Trump just over the past month at election rallies.
We won in 2016. We won by much more in 2020, but it was rigged. The Supreme Court didn't have the courage to right the wrong of the 2020 election. Millions of votes illegally stuffed into ballot boxes and all caught on government cameras. And Bob, obviously, to state the, the reality, millions of people believe this. He keeps saying it, even now. How damaging is it? Well, that's the reason that I did this. And I have some friends who I hope will still be friends because I am a conservative Republican, but I thought the truth needed to come out. And I can tell you that both times I voted for Trump, I considered him the lesser of two evils in my mind. But I, I don't like Trump. I don't trust him. I think he, in my mind, he did some good things in his policies, but I think he's unpredictable, irrational. Uh, and I now am working with No Labels, a group that is going to put up alternate candidates if it ends up being an election between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Which it very well may. And, and just to be clear, as I said, because you've been very open about you know, your, your political point of view and, and how you voted, you did vote for Trump twice. Will you vote for him again in any scenario? I hope there's a, a different choice. I, I really, I'm going to be frank with you, I don't like Joe Biden's policies and I don't think he's fit for office. Uh, I like Donald Trump's policies, but he's uh, very, uh, you know, emotional and erratic. And I think he could change policies in an instant if, if he just decides, uh, if he just decides to. It's, it's kind of unpredictable. So I really hope there's a different choice.